Good morning, folks. We've got timing details of the earthquake risk, a left cross on the climate stage, few weather concerns, but we've also got sunspots, so we're going to begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star, pretty calm in the earth-facing longitudes, but over to the left, the northern incoming quadrant, not so quiet, not so calm. That's the M-flare makers from last month returning to face Earth. And when we come to 304 angstroms and analyze the ionized helium, we see planet-sized plasma ejections heading out into space, comparatively small for the sun, however. You might notice that there is more than one hub of activity, and back in 171 angstroms, that is very clear. Got a northern bunch and a southern bunch coming in together, but only one of them is going to take our focus this week. The northern grouping isn't even a sunspot group. It's now just surface magnetism and plague configuration. To the south of it, however, just coming into view now, that's another story. This longitude on the sun is presenting another test of the earth facing quiet. Thus far, after popping onto the flare map, we have seen it ramp back downward despite coming further into view. Solar wind here. Calm and steady, and so is geomagnetism. Residual phi angle shift instabilities are likely all that's keeping us up off the floor. So we know from the solar wind that departing coronal hole was not so powerful. It's not here yet. And indeed, that's what we've been expecting from northern openings spread thin across the sphere. But the southern coronal hole is what's coming in, and that is tight confined it has been much more powerful than the north for the last few years. Its primary earth-facing dates are April 19th and 20th, with that also being the time during and just following the Mercury alignment with the Sun. This means that the seismic warning issued yesterday is set to peak the latter half of this week. We've got the coronal hole on the south plus a solid planetary geometry and the potential for solar flares in the coming days. More big shakes on the way. Now we move to our science and space news of the day, awesome animation of galaxy interactions, one being torn apart. Of course, there is no way to see the mainstream attack on this topic without lots of black hole science. To be honest, this star might have nothing to do with the purported host system, which appears to be completely untouched by the interaction. They are, in fact, just guessing. And speaking of guesses, some other scientists believe that some halo nodes of galactic material are signs of dark matter. However, while not a bad guess inside their dark matter paradigm, the strings are the key. Plasma nodes in space acting like teslapheresis machines. The weak universal field acting as the field and current imparted on these microsystems in the lab. One of the best clues to this being the answer is the cosmic web. Because you see in gravitational models, the chaos is the finish line. But when modulated by electricity, you can crash material through another structure and it will simply reconstruct itself into the cosmic web web structure we see today, rather than some broken and fragmented gravitational chaos. You get all that? Good. It's getting better. Climate change over time boils down to two things more than all others, the ENSO cycle and long-term, slightly delayed solar forcing. This chart shows the effects of these two over time, with a lag and lasting effects pronounced. ENSO at short time scales at the bottom, sunspot cycles above that, but look at the overarching warming forcing of late due to the grand solar maximum of the last 11,000 years and the 1880 start date they love to use sitting in the middle of the coldest forcing of the period. You can also see that in the primary patterned wave, S1 on the left, bottomed at 1880 and peaking only recently, and while the troughs of the waveforms below it are scattered and not reinforcing, they seem to peak after 1950 and do reinforce when the sun peaked over its 10 millennium peak as well, and when there was indeed some modest warming. There was no way to avoid it. The sun is going to sleep right now on the decadal scale though, and that is just that. Italian earth spots likely to be a pain across to the east, actually. We'll also see Midwest storm potential and that Japanese pseudo-typhoon before we run up through the atmosphere at Null School, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again right here tomorrow. It's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.